As government agencies accelerate modernization efforts, they're increasingly realizing the need to bring cloud capabilities on premises uh, where their primary enterprise data applications and workloads reside. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group, and here to share his insights about that is Chris Ryan, Chief Technology Officer for the state of New Jersey. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. You're very welcome. Look forward so, to uh, discussion. Great. So. Uh, just to start with, um, you know, a majority of the most demanding enterprise workloads and data sets, you know, often remain outside the cloud for right now. What's your view about the merits of bringing cloud capabilities to your data and applications rather than your data and applications to the cloud? Perhaps I, I, I do see it a little bit more of an and as opposed to an or. I do think that most large enterprises in the government for example, state enterprises, it's going to be a journey. I don't think that the, uh, the resources uh, nor even the, the, the imminent demand is there to do a massive shift in most cases. And I can, I can say for New Jersey, that's the case. We, you know, we, we're gonna be operating in some, in some type of a hybrid environment for quite some time. And you know, we're, we're, gonna, give, we're gonna give thought to each application as it comes on board as to what's the best fit, what makes the most sense for delivering the best services to the citizens. Um, so I think, you know, uh, we'll certainly be touching on the hybrid context. Uh, and, you know, where do you realize the greatest ROI? Is it shifting and building brand new applications and new workloads? Or in some cases, it may be worth the effort to take an existing workload and invest what is usually a greater level of effort to put that in the cloud as well. So I think it's gonna vary and it's it's definitely part of a longer journey. Well, that certainly makes sense. Um, what's an example though of a mission or an enterprise operation challenge that your agency or really the state of New Jersey's has been trying to tackle where adopting cloud capabilities as a service has made or could make a difference in terms of cost, agility or security or control? Yes, we. We have a couple examples there that I could cite. Um, obviously, many states, uh, obviously the majority of the states are undergoing um, a period of difficulty to retain and get the type of talent that can support the state's IT needs on a, on a persistent and a long-term basis. We, we absolutely would prefer, if at all possible, to have the state's workforce uh, be able to be trained and evolve with technologies and skill sets. Sometimes that's not uh, easy, especially when the industry is focusing their efforts and the market is focusing, focusing their efforts on newer skill sets. And sometimes skill sets of a, a generation or two behind are what's required to support some of these systems. So to that end, I can give you an example, New Jersey, uh, just within the past three to four months, um, uh, embarked on where we just completed the journey of taking a large, large mainframe that supports our executive branch. And we moved that to a mainframe as a service cloud operating environment. That'll, that's gonna allow us to take some of the folks that have been doing base base level operating system and, and systems, hardware and software support, and, and shift some of their skill sets to more operating a direct citizen focused service. So that's been exciting. Uh, and similarly, we're shifting workloads um, on, on a priority basis also to the cloud. One of the big challenges that we had to overcome as part of this journey is building a secure cloud operating environment um, to operate within with the proper virtualization and, and uh, firewalls and gateways that offer the right level of security for these agencies. Well, Chris, uh, talk to us a little about how have those efforts helped improve or how they uh, promise to improve the outcomes for citizens or employees at, um, your, throughout your organization and uh, the state of New Jersey. And, what, what lessons have you learned so far in this process? I guess two, two, of, two of these uh, that I can cite is, one is faster delivery to the citizens in almost all cases. And the second is lowered risk. Here's what I mean. Um, when, when, for example, many can cite the, the, uh, uh, the impact 
uh, of rapid change that many IT organizations had to go through in the past 18, 19 months. And we had to stand up three very critical systems. All three of them were cloud-based systems. We had to stand them up to support COVID, data analytics, uh, and some other, other uh, critical functions, vaccine scheduling and so forth. And in every one of those cases, we, we stood them up in a cloud operating environment. Uh, the, the procurement um, was, was standard. We have that now um, done well. So the procurement of cloud-based services, a little challenged five years ago, but I think we, we do that quite well now. So uh, the procurement uh, allowed us to get right into business and provision these services quickly. The second area I spoke of risk reduction. This kind of goes back and speaks a little bit to it's the state's at risk when you have a small number of real experts. These are, these are your real go-to men and women that, that operate these systems. And with, uh, with retirements, with you know, the, sometimes the difficulty to get uh, individuals that are trained in some of these legacy skill sets, very important skill sets, that's why shifting to a cloud and getting them under, under services of a contract support, I think reduces risk uh, for the citizens. I appreciate both those examples. And then lastly, Chris, what are your top priorities now or where do you hope to go next with cloud capabilities as a service, especially with computing at the network edge becoming more and more important? Certainly, uh, well, uh, continuing the cloud journey, we know that that's, that's a multi-year effort. Um, the, the other, one of the other priority areas is New Jersey's looking very hard at kind of a bifurcated environment that has evolved over the years, different organization structures and, and so forth, um, to get a better holistic and statewide handle on identity, identity management, identity proofing. And so that's another journey in and of itself, right? We have a lot of individual, maybe this agency or these three agencies uh, and, and my organization, the Office of Information Technology, we're responsible for providing all of the state's operating infrastructure that is on-prem and in the cloud. So how do we properly build in as close to as we can from the ground up, a strong and consistent executive branch-wide identity scheme that will serve us into the future. Almost every application, every service that we bring on board, there's that hook into identity. And when you do it several different ways, it does make that tougher. So th those are two priorities that I would certainly see uh, pretty much emerge to the top of the list. Well, and that certainly makes sense. And I know a lot of states are pursuing a very similar strategy. So glad to hear that. Well, Chris Ryan, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to really uh, share some of your insights about your efforts to use the cloud and uh, just ways to continue to serve the public uh, through the Office of Information Technology there in the state of New Jersey. Well, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to participate.